Hey, Aurelius here. Space-time is a weird thing. On Earth, we seem to be able to clearly separate space from time. But what happens to space-time near an object as massive as the black hole of galaxy M87, which has been photographed for the first time recently? This is a great opportunity to push our concepts of relativity, eternity and light to the limits of science and fiction. There is an inexorable force in the cosmos where time and space converge, where the here and now may be forever. Moving through space, swallowing everything in its path, radio waves, light, even planets and stars. Let's start with the very first photograph of a black hole released on April 10th, 2019. Although the quality is not perfect, we can see that it looks very close to what we know from sci-fi movies. This is also not any black hole, but a huge supermassive black hole in the center of galaxy M87. If it's so huge, then why is the image so fuzzy? Well, because it's really, really far away. In fact, it's 53.5 million light years away. It takes up only a minuscule fraction of our night sky. Because the light takes so long to reach us, it also means we see the black hole how it looked like 53.5 million years ago. What's great about this image is that we now have evidence of an object out there that actually warps space and time to the extreme. The idea that gravity influences space and time has been around for over a hundred years when Albert Einstein released his general theory of relativity in 1916. A black hole's gravity is so severe that it would compress you to the size of an atom. If you fall feet first into the singularity of a black hole, you would be stretched into a noodle. And since scientists can also have fun, they called this phenomenon spaghettification. If you're not too close to a black hole, let's say on a planet near a black hole, gravity doesn't necessarily kill you. Instead, you orbit the black hole. That's because gravity is the curvature of space-time and we're just pawns in this three-dimensional fabric. There's also a young movement that proposes space-time acts like a liquid, a superfluid, in an effort to unite quantum mechanics with general relativity. But we won't get into that until there is more substantial evidence, like, for example, a photograph. Instead, let's talk about what happens to time if you take a short trip near a black hole and then return to Earth. Well, everyone on Earth would have aged a lot or would already be dead. In fact, if you touch the event horizon of a black hole and somehow make it out again, our solar system might have ceased to exist and our sun might have died long ago. Time is relative, so for me on Earth, observing you at a black hole with a telescope, it would seem like you froze in time. If you brought a telescope yourself on your trip, you'll see the Earth racing around the sun at ludicrous speed and then eventually the sun itself flash up in a supernova. Plus, who knows how much time passes after that. Gravity can slow or freeze time. You don't even have to look that far. If you point a telescope to a clock on a GPS satellite, you could also see this effect. With very good eyes, that is. Low gravity affects GPS satellites by 45 microseconds every day compared to Earth. So our software needs to recalibrate the transmitted data from GPS satellites before using it for triangulation. Otherwise, our position would be off by 10 kilometers. But that's not all. You also have to subtract 7 microseconds due to the high velocity at which GPS satellites travel. That's because high speeds counter low gravity. Or to be more exact, speed affects space-time. 
Space and time are axes of the same diagram. One cannot move through space and time equally. Since the universe does not distinguish between space and time, our planet simply sacrifices time while orbiting our sun. Our solar system sacrifices even more time when traveling to our galaxy. But in a closed environment like our atmosphere, movements are way slower than that. So movement on planet Earth does not affect time. Or does it? Actually, it does, even though it's minuscule and not noticeable. However, this means we affect our subjective or relative timeline with every movement we make. Past, present and future are equally real and happening for someone somewhere. This is the not so widely known block universe theory. This weird theory supports the concept of eternalism as opposed to the concept of presentism. Time isn't like a universal movie reel, but more like stacks of movie reel frames. Everything in the universe has an individual stack of movie frames. You can fast forward individual frame stacks around you the faster you move or the more gravity you experience. A second for you near a black hole could mean a lifetime for me on Earth. What we both perceive after a second are two completely different states of the universe. I could experience the year 2019 while you see the year 3019. However, both our experiences are genuine and so is every experience of anyone moving at any speed. There's one entity though that has no past, present or future. A light photon has no mass or size and is the fastest thing we know of. It can travel an infinite distance until it is absorbed. Light travels at the absolute speed limit in physics, which just happens to be about 300 million meters per second. A pretty random number, but so are many constants in physics. We perceive a photon to circle the Earth 7.5 times in a second or cover the distance between the Sun and Earth in about 8 minutes. But how much time has passed for the photon? Relativists say no time at all. At this speed threshold, the flow of time comes to a stop, similar to the effects of extreme gravity at a black hole. No time would pass for the photon while all of the time passes around the photon. If this is true, then from the perspective of the photon, it is at all places at the same time. There's even no time that has passed for a photon from the root of the Big Bang to wherever it is now. Only as observers on Earth, we can say that those photons are about 13.8 billion years old. If that's not strange enough, you can even argue that light does not really exist because from its reference frame, it is absorbed the moment it is emitted, no matter the distance. In fact, there's no distance at all because relativity says that space contracts infinitely at the speed of light. Only for passive bystanders like us does light take up space. If you are a photon, the entire universe would be smaller than an atom. As you can see, space-time is a weird thing. It is also the fuel of many good stories. Make sure to check out Interstellar, a movie featuring a black hole and made in collaboration with physicists like Kip Thorne. Uh, it, it, uh. For you metalheads out there, check out my lyrics and vocals in The Grand Continuum, an album by my old band Darkest Horizon themed around space-time and black holes. While you're at it, listen to the song Tempus in Versus, which captures the idea of a block universe. Time's up! Make sure you leave a like and subscribe. See you next time. Aurelius, signing out.